I learned this from my pastor, your pastor, Darrell Arnold, that worship is warfare. And Pastor Arnold said, every time you clap those hands, you are smashing the plans of the enemy. So come on, clap those hands, clap those hands, clap those hands, clap those hands. You can be seated. You can be seated. We thank God for the ministry of music. They did a phenomenal job. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Also, I thank God for my lovely wife of 20-something years. Yes, yes. Lady Kim, she's a blessing to me, and I thank God for her. I love your pastor. My pastor, Pastor Arnold, he's one of the best Bible preachers, prophets, apostles, bishops ever. You ought to celebrate Pastor Daryl Arnold. Yep. He's a man of vision, and I, I declare when you, when you come into Knoxville, uh, Knoxville screams OBC. Somebody say amen. When you come down Harriet Tubman you can just see the fingerprints of OBC all on uh, this street, this community. Y'all do a phenomenal job. Again, you have an anointed pastor. Uh, Lady Arnold said that I, I love her pastor, but we also love Lady Arnold. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's celebrate Lady Arnold. Yes, 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 yes. It is great to see what God is doing here at OBC. Every time I come, I get stretched. It's really, I'm, I'm here because I needed to be here just to witness and experience what God is doing in this great church. And I want you to know, OBC, God is not through with you yet. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Pastor Arnold is a model pastor to me. Uh, his fingerprint is not only on this church, but I want you to know that his fingerprint is on churches all across the United States. The model of ministry that y'all do here at OBC, many pastors are, are utilizing that model. Even at the Fellowship of Faith, we, we utilize a lot of models, paradigms that we get here from this great church, OBC. Uh, and I am glad to say that Pastor Darrell Arnold is my pastor, my covering. I tell people all over the country where I go, my pastor is Darrell Arnold of the Overcoming Believers Church, Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm telling you, church, you ought to celebrate that, celebrate that, celebrate that. Because, again, not only are y'all making a difference here in Knoxville, but y'all y'all are making a difference in other pastors and other churches, ministries, and lives as well. Thank God for the Arnold children. Yes, thank God. Yep. The, the daughters, the sons. Y'all had a prom last week. Lord, have mercy. We had a prom in Huntsville with our daughter as well. And somebody say amen. I'm glad, glad this over with now. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. All right. Hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. Again, Pastor Arnold is my pastor. I learned how to teach and preach from him. Even the prophetic, I learned it from him. And um, I just, I love being here at the Overcoming Believers Church. Turn to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. And I want you to follow me. Um, Along this in this exposition of Acts chapter 27, I want you to follow me in Acts chapter 27. We're going to uh, do a survey of Acts chapter 27, and we're going to land at verse 44. Verse 44 is where my thesis is going to come from. So let's look, let's look at Acts chapter 27, verse 44. If you have it, say amen. And again, I thank God for the administrators, the office personnel here at the Overcoming Believers Church. Yep. yep. Uh, the, the, the excellence that they do, the kindness that they show is greatly appreciated. Verse 44, and the rest, some on boats, some on, here it is, broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe. To land. In verse 44, underline the phrase, 
broken pieces. We're going to get there in a minute, but bow your heads with me for a moment of prayer and meditation. Father, as we study your anointed word, I ask that you will anoint me, be with my mind as I think, my tongue as I talk. And as your word go forth, as Paul says in Thessalonians, may it have free course and you be glorified and may your people be edified. Again, be with my mind as I think, my tongue as I talk, and let me experience, let me share in your anointing. And thank you for the Overcoming Believers Church, Pastor Arnold. And may your word, as it go forth, thank you for the, the confirmation of your word with signs following. In Jesus' name we pray, let everyone say amen. In verse 44, again, I want to talk about today, from verse 44, broken pieces. Everybody say broken pieces. I love studying about the Apostle Paul at our church. We did a study of the three missionary journeys of the Apostle Paul, and it was very fruitful. But again, on today, we're going we're gonna to see this in the life of the Apostle Paul, broken pieces. The message proposition, listen, the message proposition is learning to survive a storm. Somebody may be in a storm right now. And I want you to allow the word of God to speak personally and prophetically to you as we see how to survive a storm. Let's get right to it. We're going to study Acts chapter 27. And there are three things I want you to see. Number one, I'm in verse one. We see the voyage of Paul as a prisoner. Follow me. Acts chapter 27. I'm in verse one. Paul is traveling with Luke, as verse 1 says, and it was determined that we, Paul and Luke, traveling together, should sail to Rome. But not only is Luke traveling, but there are also some other prisoners as well. Follow me in verse 1. They delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's band. It is not certain as to why they were with Paul, but nevertheless, they were. And Paul and these prisoners were under the supervision of a man by the name of Julius. The text says, Julius, a member of Augustus's band. That does not mean that uh, he was a drum major of Augustus's band. It just simply means that he was a supervisor. I mean, verse 2, Paul, again, uh, notice how the geography of theology comes to play or the theology of geography comes to play as they travel throughout these various places. These various places have significant meaning. So follow me. In verse 2, Paul was traveling on a boat called a dramaton. Watch this now. A dramaton literally means death. They set sail to the coast of Asia. Other than the prisoners, the text mentions another passenger by the name of Aristarchus of Thessalonica. You can read about him in Acts chapter 20 when he traveled with Paul on one of Paul's missionary journeys. I mean, verse 3, they, they traveled to Sidon. And while in Sidon, verse 3 talks about the kindness of Julius and how Julius allowed Paul to go into Sidon and refresh himself. Then in verse 4, they sailed to Cyprus. While in Cyprus, watch this, the winds were dangerously blowing. Hermeneutically, this chapter is full of allegory. And you can, it is to be interpreted uh, literally and symbolically. Literally, they were in a storm. The winds were blowing. And symbolically, these contrary winds represent the reality of life on our Christian journey. Because how many of you know contrary winds will blow? How many of you know that storms are inevitable? Here we see Paul, an apostle, uh, written. He wrote 13 of the New Testament books, but yet he is in the middle of a storm. And all through the Bible, you'll see storms. Listen to me. Storms are inevitable, and there are different kinds of storms. In Job chapter 1, uh, Job was in a storm. He was in a storm of disobedience because God told him to go to Nineveh, but he's in Tarsus. So he's in a storm of disobedience. In Matthew chapter 14, the disciples were in a storm. Jesus told Peter to walk on the water. Peter slipped and fell, stumbled on the water. Jesus said, oh, you of little faith. It was a storm of development, a storm of growth. Here in Acts chapter 27, Paul is in a storm. It's a storm of decision because we'll see in a minute that they're going to make the wrong decision. Listen to me, church. Storms are inevitable. 
I mean, verse 4 and 5, they wanted to travel west to Cyprus, but the weather would not allow them to do so. So instead of going west, they had to travel north to Myra, watch this, and they bypassed Cecilia and Pamphylia. Here's the lesson right here. Whenever you are in the will of God, you will avoid a lot of stuff. In verse 6, watch this. While in Myra, they changed boats. They switched from, listen, a dramatin, which means death, to Alexandria, which means destiny. Watch this. Whenever you are on board with Jesus, you change from being headed to death to your destiny with Jesus. Somebody say amen. In verse 7, they were in no big hurry because, again, the weather was still bad. And after several days of traveling, they come to a place called Sindias. And yet again, they could not stop there because of the wind. So they sailed to Crete opposite Salome. All I'm trying to show you is the text is tailored to teach us, let Jesus navigate your life. How many of you know he will order your steps and your stops? In verse 8, they come to a place called Fair Havens near a city called La Sea. I'm not sure how much time they spent in La Sea, but verse 9 says the fast was now already passed. This is in reference to the Day of Atonement. But notice in verse 9 how Paul admonishes and advises the crew. He says, I know this voyage will be dangerous. That lets us know that this Christian life is not all peaches and cream. Somebody say amen. Amen. Secondly, I'm in verse 11. We see the vice of Julius, his pleasure. In verse 11, Julius did not adhere to Paul's warnings. Instead of listening to Paul, he was listening to the owner of the boat. And that's the word right there on listening to the wrong people. We need to learn to listen to good, sound, godly counsel. In verse 12, they should have stayed in Fairhaven, watch this, which means safety. Everybody say safety. But they wanted to go to Crete, which means satisfaction. Everybody say satisfaction. You do know that is how many people miss heaven and make hell because they are in full pursuit of satisfaction. They wanted to go to Crete because it was more appealing than Fairhaven. Listen, here's the lesson. Don't base your decisions on how things look. Don't base the will of God on how appealing something is. My grandmama told me a long time ago, everything glitter ain't gold. Everything shining ain't silver. Somebody say amen. Follow me. I'm still in verse, I'm still in chapter 27. I'm in verse 13. While traveling to Crete, They run into the south wind, and the south wind is symbolic of sin, Satan, and the world. The the south wind is a deceiving wind, and and it's a picture again of how deceiving sin, Satan, and the world is. They are deceiving. I mean, verse 14, they, they, they set sail to Crete. And they run into a hurricane by the name of Iraklodon. I might be talking to somebody this morning. You are in a storm of Iraklodon proportion. So verse 15, literally, the navigation of the ship was hard to control. But literally or symbolically, that is what the Lordship of Christ is all about. Let him control your life. They, they come to an island by the name of Claudia. They, they, they almost didn't make it, but they used some ropes to, to hold the boat together. In, in verse 19, 18, notice the last phrase of verse 18. The next day they lightened the ship. So literally, they were throwing things overboard that was hindering the ship. They, they were throwing things overboard that they didn't need. Symbolically, in our Christian journey, we need to throw away some things that is hindering our walk with the Lord. Hebrews uh, 12 and 1 says, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Notice in verse 20 what Luke says, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. That is, without Christ, life is hopeless. Somebody say amen. Number three, thirdly, we see the victory in Jesus, his promise. 
This storm lasted for several days, according to verse 21, and they didn't have anything to eat. Look at verse 21. Paul exhorts them. He says, sirs, you should have listened to me and not tried to sail to Crete. If you had listened then, none of this would have happened. How many of you know that, that sometimes the Spirit tells us not to do things, and we do it anyway, and then we wonder about the results? The Spirit told you not to go to the club, but you went anyway. The, the, the Spirit told you not to take that job, but you took that job anyway because of the money. The Spirit told you not to do those drugs and alcohol, but you did it anyway. The Spirit said no, but you said yes. Now, not only did Paul exhort them, but in verse 22, Paul encouraged them. Watch what he says. Be of good cheer. Nobody will die and the ship will not be destroyed. Here's what I want to tell somebody this morning who is in a storm. I came by to tell you to be encouraged. If you don't mind, turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, be encouraged. Because when you are in a storm, that's what you need. You need to be encouraged. So in this text, Paul teaches us how to survive a storm. How do you survive a storm? Number one, you rely on the promises of God. In, in, in verse 22, everything looked bleak. That they were starving, they were struggling to survive, and all Paul had to rely on was a promise from God that no one would die. How do you survive a storm? Number two, you rest in the presence of God. Verse 23, for there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord. I want you to know that during times of a storm, God is right there and he will see you through. How many of you know you got angels watching over you? How do you survive a storm? Number three, you recognize the providence of God. In verse 24, the angel spoke to Paul and he assured them that God was in control. Notice the phrase in verse 24, fear not. Fear not means Christ is in control. Fear not means Christ is the comforter. In times of a storm, Jesus says to you, fear not. How do you survive a storm? Number four, you rejoice in the power of God. Look at verse 25. Notice what Paul is doing or what Paul says. He says, be of good cheer. I love this. For I believe God. How many of you know God's power is released when we believe him? Oh, Lord, if you are in a storm, all you got to do is rejoice. Because God will see you through. Go ahead, put those hands together right now in advance. Because he will see you through. Watch what Paul says in verse 25b. I love this. This is a faith builder right here. That it shall be even as it was told me. That, that's how our faith should be when it comes to the word of God. It shall be as God said. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. It shall be as God said, I'm the head and not the tail. It shall be as God says, I'm an overcomer. It shall be as God said. How many of you know God will do what he says he will do? They were in this storm for 14 days, according to verse 27 and in verse 28 and 29. It was late at night, midnight, in a storm on a boat. That they could not see anything, and they were afraid that they may crash into rocks. So, in verse 29, they threw four anchors into the water, and watch what it says. This is King James talk. They wished for the day. That, that word, wished for the day, is King James talk that they were praying. Listen to me. Praying is not wishing, but, 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 but they were praying. Here, the proper response to a storm is praying and not panicking. Somebody say amen. In verse 31, Paul emerges as the captain. He says, you won't be saved, I love this, unless you stay in the ship. That's what I want to tell somebody this morning. Stay in the ship. Turn to your neighbor and say, stay in the ship. Because a lot of times when storms come, people don't come to church. Storms cause some people to get out of the word. Storms cause some people to stop praying. But I came by to tell you, stay in the ship. In, in, in verse 32, they cut the ropes and let 
the boat go. That, that, listen, let, let me ask you, what, what things are you holding on to that you need to cut loose? Maybe you are in a relationship that you need to cut loose. Maybe you are holding on to something in the past that you need to cut loose. Maybe it's some friends that you need to cut loose. They cut it loose and they let it go. Learn, listen, learn to let it go. Somebody say amen. Verse 33 says, and while the day was coming on us, I love it. That that is, when it comes, when it comes to the storms of life, some storms last longer than others, but here it is. Storms don't last always. The good news is the sun will shine. Oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. It may be fried today. It may be Friday in your life right now, but the good news is Sunday is coming. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Again, in verse 34, it had been 14 days that they went without eating in this storm. The text calls it fasting, but they were not fasting on purpose. Paul tells them, he says, get some meat because you haven't eaten anything in 14 days. Well, watch what he says, verse 34b, it is for your health. That lets me know that we need to learn the discipline of eating healthy, not just eating because we are hungry. I just said something right there because a lot of people eat because they're hungry not to be healthy. Somebody say amen. In verse 35 and 36, Paul uh, took some bread and prayed. And many scholars say that he gave them communion. But moreover, I love this. Paul gave thanks to God for the food. How many of you know that we too must be thankful? Because there are some people who didn't have anything to eat. My granddaddy would say some tea. So when you got something to eat, you ought to be thankful. Somebody say amen. In verse 37, Luke, being very meticulous in his penmanship, he records how many people were on the ship. 276 people. But, but I really like how the King James says 276 souls. That, that is how we are to view people, not as numbers, but as souls. In verse 38, they, after they had eaten and were full, they began to throw some wheat overboard. They continue to throw things overboard, and that's a picture of the sanctification process. How many of you know that God is still working on us? God is not through with us yet. He's taking what's in us that's not like him out of us. Somebody say amen. amen. In verse 39 and 40, the next day, they crashed into a rock. Look at verse 41b. They ran into the ship aground. The foremost part stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. Look at verse 42. When the boat crashed, the soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners because they thought the prisoners would escape. Look at verse 43. But the centurion willing to save Paul. I mean, if you know God keeps us from a lot of stuff. Uh, kept them from their purpose. Everybody shout purpose. And commanded that they would, that they should swim, cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Oh, Lord. Paul says, grab you a piece of the ship and hold on to it. Oh, Lord, I love the word picture here. Grab a promise and hold on to it. Grab you a piece of the word and hold on to it. How many of you know just one word from God can save your life? Look at verse 44. Here it is. And the rest, some on boards, some on what? Broken pieces of the ship. And it came to pass that they all escaped safe to land. Again, in verse 44, circle, underline the word broken pieces. There are a lot of people, perhaps there are a lot of people here this morning who are broken. But listen to me. Brokenness is not uselessness because before they build a house they had to break a tree uh, before they lay concrete they had to break some rocks before you get a harvest how I many of you know you gotta break the land 
through brokenness, God really gives us what we need. Oh, I, I got Bible on it over in Genesis chapter 3. We see broken fellowship, but God used it to show us grace. In, in Exodus 32, there is a broken law that showed us we couldn't save ourselves. In, in Nehemiah, there was the broken walls that shows us restoration. In, Genesis, in Judges 7, Gideon used broken jars to show us the power of God. In, in, in Matthew and Mark 14, Mary broke open the alabaster box to usher in the glory of God. In John 6, Jesus took two fish and five loaves of bread and broke it to show us his abundance. In, in, in Luke 5, there were four friends who brought their paralyzed friend, their lame friend of Jesus through the roof. That, that, that broken roof shows us God is a healer. And on the cross, Jesus' broken body brought us redemption. Brokenness does not mean uselessness. Broken pieces. Uh, the text really gives us a word play on peace. P-I-E-C-E -E, with peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E. broken pieces. Some, some homes may be broken. Some, some marriages may be broken. Somebody's finances may be broken. Somebody's hopes may be broken. Somebody's dreams may be broken. Somebody's life today may be broken. But the good news is Jesus can put the pieces back together and give you his peace. I'm closing. Verse 44 again closes by saying, and it came to pass that they all escaped safe. Everybody shout safe, safe. to land. Oh Lord, all, all, all I came by to tell you today is you can make it. Turn to your neighbor and say, you can make it. Oh Lord, th th there's a song that says, and whatever you're going through, you can make it. This trial that you are going through, God will see you through. Whatever is going on, God won't let it last too long. You are not in it by yourself. You can make it. One more time, turn to your neighbor and say, you can make it. Oh, all through the Bible, we see people who are in difficult situations and have difficult Difficult circumstances, and if they made it, how many of you know we can make it? Oh Lord, I, I don't care what your situation is, you can make it. Lord, have mercy. I don't care how things look, you can make it. In Acts chapter 27, if they can make it, you can make it. You remember the, the, the widow woman in, in 1 Kings 17 who, who didn't have any food to eat? If she can make it you can make it you remember Lazarus who had died come on talk to me if Lazarus can make it you can make it he was dead you, you, you remember the lame man in Acts chapter 3 he, he didn't have any money if he can make it you can make it you remember the woman with an issue of blood if she can make it you can make it you, you remember Jairus his daddy. Come on, talk to me. His daughter, his, Jairus, his daughter was dead. If he can make it, you can make it. You, you remember the children of Israel. Before them was the Red Sea. See, behind them was Pharaoh. If they can make it, you can make it. Come on, talk to me. You remember Jesus. On Friday, he died. It looked like things was over. Come on, talk to me. The circumstances didn't look good. He was dead all day Friday. He was dead all day Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, he got up. And if he got up, you can get up. If if Jesus can make it, you can make it because the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. Oh, I came by to tell somebody you can make it. Come on, do I have any witnesses in here? Do I have anybody who, who, who was in school and, and couldn't pay for it but you made it? Come on, do I have anybody who was sick 
and God heals your body, you can make it. Anybody ever been, been on the highway sleeping? You didn't think you was going to make it? But some way, somehow, God made a way. I just came by to tell you, you can make it. One more time, turn to your neighbor. Grab your neighbor by the hand. Come on, shake their hand. Tell them, you can make it. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? If you know you can make it, say yes. Come on, church. If you know you can make it, say yes. Put those hands together and give him some praise. Hey, hey, you can make it. Do I have any witnesses here? Ain't he all right? Say yes. Say yes. Ah, no, he's all right. I, 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 I know he's all right. Do you know him? Say yes.
building. Everybody grabbing somebody's hand. Today, you may have come in on broken pieces, but there are two types of people here today. Either you're saved or you're unsaved. But one type of people can walk out of here today, the unsaved. So right now, you have the opportunity to accept Christ as your Savior. You don't want to leave here on broken pieces and without Christ. You want to leave here with the assurance that Christ is your Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, today we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die for us, God, and to get up, with, uh, get up for us with all power in his hand. Today, Lord, we will not leave here like we came. Today, God, we made the conscious decision, God, to gain assurance and know that you are Christ our Lord. If today, the Lord is talking to you. If he's saving you, if you need to be saved on today, just reach out and squeeze your neighbor's hand. If he's talking to you, if you've been living life a, a certain type of way, you know it hadn't been right. You've tried everything but the right thing. Today you have an opportunity to accept Christ. Squeeze your neighbor's hand if God is talking to you today. You may be unsure, you may be uncomfortable, you may be doubting, but the only assurance you can have today is the assurance of Christ. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. Now, if somebody has squeezed your hand today, would you lift that hand in the air? If somebody squeezed your hand, lift it in the air. Amen. Amen. If you have your hand in the air, would you please come to the altar? Make the final step to accept Christ as your Savior. Bring that neighbor down to the front. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for those who are coming into the kingdom. Amen. This word was for you. Anybody else? Anybody else in the house today wants the Lord as your Savior? Amen. We got a moment. We'll wait for you. Amen. Come on, keep praising the Lord. Amen. 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 Everybody stretch your hands uh, toward these men and women of God. Father, thank you. Repeat after me, those of you at the altar, everybody. Father, thank you for your word on today. Thank you, Lord for saving me today I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you raised your son from the dead so that I would be saved on today thank you in Jesus name amen clap your hands again give God some praise amen Alter people, are you giving out information today? Amen. Yes. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together for the man of God who delivered the word on today, Pastor Troy Garner. Pastor Troy is an amazing man of God. And every time he comes to this house, he blesses us. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Troy. Uh, it's time for tithes and offering. Amen. We got a few excited people in the building on today. Get out your tithes and offering. Uh, men, uh, Tiffany uh, is over to your left. If you want to give by PayPal, if you want to uh, give via text giving, you can do that as well. ATM machine, checkbook, cash. 
ask your neighbor, can you hold something? We, we do it all kinds of ways. We don't want anybody to be left out. While you're doing that, I want to remind you of a couple of announcements. And after, after I do that, they're going to roll the, the video announcements. Um, we want to be in prayer for the Price family. One of our very own uh, greeters, Anthony Price, went to be with the Lord on Friday morning. Um, so please be in prayer for his family. Um, the homegoing celebration will be sometime this week. We haven't gotten a, a date yet, maybe Friday, but uh, we will let you know as soon as we get the details. Um, again, for the launch party, if you do not register for the launch party on Thursday, you cannot just show up. So you have to get registered. You want to do that today. Um, again, you will be turned away at the door. Not ladies, Lady Arnold's rules, but that's just... Um, the rules that LifeWay they've made. So if you don't register, you will not be allowed to get in. So she's giving you another opportunity to register on, on today. Um, Ministry Oasis, that video is about to roll in just a moment. Um, it, the new quarter is going to start first Sunday in May. And so um, if you want to register for that, you can see Craig after service in the corridor. Everybody have, if you don't have anything to give, would you lift your hand and somebody's gonna put something in it? If you don't have anything to give, lift your hand. Everybody got something? All right, lift that seed and repeat after me. Lord, thank you for this seed. I sow it back to you. Because of this seed, I will never be broke another day of my life. Wave it in the devil's face. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Roll that video, please.